Welcome to my lecture online. Here we have a couple of examples. Would be a desirable technique. Who came home? Hello. Welcome to my lecture online. Here we're going to try a couple of examples of how to apply factoring by grouping. And what kind of gives it away that that might be the best technique to use is the fact that our polynomials have four terms in them which usually implies that factoring by grouping may be a good technique. So let's take a look at our first example. Notice we have a y squared and a y squared there, so maybe we want to group those two together and factor out a y squared. So let's do that. But then we take a look at this group right here, and there doesn't seem to be anything we can factor out. Well, let's see what happens when we factor out a y squared from the first two. So this can be written as y squared times an x cubed minus 4 plus, now notice we have an x cubed minus 4 which look, looks exactly the same as that. So what we're going to do to make it look the same is we're going to factor out a 1. Well, that's not really necessary except when we do that we have the right format. So we're going to factor out a 1 and write this as plus 1 times x cubed minus 4. When we do that we now have reduced this to the sum of two terms, and notice each of those two terms contains in it an x cubed minus 4. So there's an x cubed minus 4 here, and there's an x cubed minus 4 here, which means we can factor those two out, and when we do, we will get the following. So this will be equal to x cubed minus 4, multiply times what's left. On the first term, we have a y squared left, and on the second term, we have a plus 1 left. So this now becomes x cubed minus 4 times y squared plus 1, and we've successfully factored it. We've now written our polynomial of four terms as a product of two binomials. Now it turns out that we cannot factor it any further, so that's as far as we can go. Later on, we'll probably end up with things that we can continue to factor, but we're not going to worry that, about that now. Let's take a look at the second one. So here we have an xa squared minus 5b squared minus xb squared plus 5a squared. Hmm. The first and the third term contain an x, so maybe I want to group those two together. So let's go ahead and do that. So we end up with an xa squared minus xb squared minus 5b squared and plus 5a squared. So now the assumption is that we're going to factor out an x from here and maybe we'll factor out a 5 from there. But notice we have an a squared minus b squared and we have a minus b squared plus a squared. So I'm going to reverse the order of these terms so that they're lined up the same, same as the first two right here. So this can now be written as x a squared minus x b squared and bring this as the third term plus 5a squared minus 5b squared. So notice I have an a squared minus b squared, a squared minus b squared. So it looks like it's beginning to uh, look correct. Now I'm going to group these two together and group these two together. Out of the first two, I can factor out an x. So this is equal to x times a squared minus b squared. And here I can factor out a 5. So this becomes a squared minus b squared. All right, now when I take a look at that, I have one term plus another term, and each of these two terms has a common factor. The common factor is a squared minus b squared, a squared minus b squared, so we can factor those out out of each of the two terms. When we do that, we get the following. We get a squared minus b squared times what's left. The first term has an x in it, plus the second term has a 5 in it. Now, you may or may not already know how to do that, but when we have the difference of two squares, we can actually factor that. We'll show that technique later, but this can be written as an a plus b times an a minus b times x plus 5. So we can actually further factor this binomial, a squared minus b squared, it's called the difference of squares, and it can be written as a plus b times a minus b. Just to verify that that is indeed correct, we're going to use the, the, the method of distribution to multiply everything back together again to make sure we end up back with what we started with. So this can be written as a times a, that's a squared, a times the negative b, which is a minus ab, 
B times a positive A, which is a positive AB, and plus B times a negative B, which is a minus B squared. And then we take the whole thing and we multiply that times X plus 5. And notice that the two middle terms cancel out, the minus AB plus AB, so that cancels out. And we're left with an A squared minus B squared times an X plus 5, which is what we had uh, over here, right here. So it shows that this is the exact same thing as before, but in factored format. But all we cared about at this point was to know how to factor something like a polynomial with four terms. We want to group them together correctly. Here we just took the first two and the last two and grouped them together. Here we rearranged the terms first. We took the x plus b and we moved it over here. We took the minus 5b squared moved it over there. And then finally we changed, interchanged the, the last two right here to write in a format to make them look exactly the same. So with a little bit of moving things around, we can group them correctly together to go ahead then and find a good way to factor it. And that's what we mean by factoring by grouping.